Diddy looked like a fool leaving that club as a scoring celebrity. He need to get his 2020s check so he can see that Jay-Z didn't want him at the 4040. They said he was moping around in the club the whole time looking for some sympathy and nobody was trying to give it to him and that's why he left early. These are all rumors, allegations, and speculations, but for some reason I think a lot of this stuff is true. Jay-Z trying to reintroduce himself. He's a married man, a business mogul, a community leader, a father. He don't shut down the 4040 club to renovate it, sage it, rebuild it. And a lot of people saying the reason why he felt the need to do all of that is because his man Diddy been doing a lot of dirt up in that 4040. And ain't no telling if it's tapes laying around, it could be stuff hitting in the bathroom walls. He had to get rid of all of that evidence so he could move forward. And lo and behold, the man they was trying to get rid of showed up to the party looking pitiful. It was all good 20 years ago when the 4040 Club first opened. Diddy was there, of course. The Cat Man, you had Destiny's Child, T.I., and everybody was on top. Terrell Owens was on top of his game. Magic Johnson, Jacob the Jeweler, everybody that was somebody was there to celebrate the grand opening of the 4040. Nowadays, this man is everywhere. He might be the new Diddy. Every hip hop event, He's hosting it or he's in the building. Rappers flock to him like groupies. I wouldn't be surprised when it's all said and done if this man owned everybody in hip hop's masters cause he there for a reason. But Jay-Z know how to move in the room full of vultures. Jay-Z closed his 4040 club after 20 years last year for reconstruction and it's resurfacing. Looks to be on the horizon with a special pop-up happening. They about to have an event with Tom Brady, Derek Jetta, Kevin Durant, Gary Payton, Eli Manning, Carmelo Anthony, and Meek Mill already got some champagne sitting on ice. I love Jay-Z, but it's looking like he abandoned a whole lot of people. It's looking like he ain't got no friends left in hip hop. We gonna be talking about it tonight on Docs Daily. Y'all need to come through, get your seats. It's gonna be a live stream. We gonna be there all night. We gotta have this conversation about how Jay-Z is the last man standing. People thinking that he orchestrating everybody falling off. From Diddy, OJ Simpson, he did a song about OJ. Kanye West with the Kardashians. He put Kanye in the OJ Simpson situation while he rapping about OJ. So people thinking that Jay-Z is the one pulling the strings. And I'm doing this video to let y'all know that that's not the case. I left the link in the description box. Y'all need to come through, watch the video, cool out with us. But until then, we need to get into this video, man. Yo, 4040 Club just closed. They opened a new location. Give me the, give me, hey, give me the details, dog. Cause that was, hey, you guys were dropping that, hyping it in song. It was in like, yeah, no, no, yeah. no, no, sorry, hey, it's a, it has like a mystique to it. What, the what's 40 the deal? It's been open 15 years. You know, we was in Battery Park, like lower Manhattan. Nobody go down there. There's no clubs down there. We were the first. So after 15 years, Jay decided to close the doors to move it uptown a little bit further to Midtown. So this is it's, not the, no, the, the miles. It's not over. We coming back bigger, stronger than ever, Yo. man. You know what I'm saying? Where, where you said uptown? Uh, Midtown. Midtown. Like, Midtown. like around 42nd, 34th Street. So you, where the money at? You got the you got the the, the bricks already picked out. Like it's a, it's it's they, already being built. Yeah, they got it. It's supposed to open next summer. What? Yep. Yeah, top of the year next 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 year. Yeah. And it's be, better than ever. I hope so. Anything man. you could like, anything you could say, like beyond that. We need some star tenders, so baddies pull up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you, bro. Love, That's what's man. up. Leak was so excited for the grand opening of the 4040 back in the day, but nowadays it's looking like he wasn't even invited. This is a reintroduction to Jay Z. This a jigger that we never even knew existed. This is a new hove that we all gonna have to get accustomed to. And Dame Dash. He calling himself Dusko Poppington like he never ever heard of Sean Blazerton. Come on, Dame. Dusko Poppington? Really, my G? A lot of people left the 4040 early last night, especially after Diddy's mother allegedly put both hands on Lil' Kim. And on top of all that, Diddy was there, so ain't nobody really want to be there. Hey. 
Talk to me about why you're excited to be here tonight. I'm excited to be here today because it's prestigious people here. When I'm in a room with right with the right people, I'm saying I feel like I'm doing. Anyone who can get your partner back into the photos, please? Yo, it's your boy, Danny Geese. Shout out to whole 4040. Shout out to Complex. Appreciate the love. We take September 8th. Megan, we got to really court in your day. Hope the past don't catch up with Jay-Z the same way it did Diddy, because regardless of what you got to say about Hove, he do do great things for his community. He do great things for society. If there's ever a tragic event or something like that, you can count on Jay-Z to go down there and lend a helping hand. Right now on Fox 5 Music 10. And music taking center stage tonight as Jay-Z and guests playing a special 9-11 concert to benefit the widows and children of the city's first responders. And Fox 5's Ann Craig is at Madison Square Garden with uh, the highlights. Hi, Ann. How's that concert going? Hey, guys. Well, the concert is still going on right now as we speak, and fans are getting a real treat. This was advertised as just a Jay-Z concert. Well, we all know he has a lot of great friends. So tonight, already, Rihanna, Kanye, and his lovely wife, Beyonce, has joined him on stage. This concert sold out in a matter of minutes, with every single penny of the proceeds going to benefit the widows and children of 9-11 victims. Born and raised in the Big Apple, this rapper turned media mogul says raising money for the families of 9-11 victims is just the right thing to do. The pride I felt and uh, the selflessness that, you know, the family members made, you know, for all of us. Um, I just thought it was the right thing to do. You know, and I'm a New Yorker through and through. Jay-Z as an artist, he's turning a tragic moment in the lives of New Yorkers into a beneficial moment, giving back money to the families who lost loved ones. Tickets were priced at fifty-four fifty to make the show more affordable to all. It's really great, and I really like respect him more as an artist and as a person for doing this. I really appreciate this, and I'm definitely going to come out and support him and support everyone firefight his fam. Even though he give a lot back, he can't act like he ain't never received none from Puff. Did he hit this man off with a whole album on the American Gangster soundtrack? And Jay act like he don't want to give that man no credit talking about diddy didn't executive produce it but at the same time he admitted that diddy gave him all the beats for the album and now that diddy took an l he ain't even trying to help him out a little bit when you went into the studio to make this album american gangster there was a buzz about you jay-z's back he's creating music yeah everybody wanted to get involved People that hadn't been with you for a while, like Diddy. Yeah. Comes to you and wants to be the executive producer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And you look at him and say, man, you... You can't executive produce an executive producer. <laughs> what did you say to him? What was that? That's what I said. You can't executive produce an executive producer. But he said, man, uh, you're the greatest, all right? But even Michael Jordan had a coach. That's what he said. <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> He's great. And you listened to him. Yeah. What happened was I was going in the house. I was right in front of my house. Yeah. And uh, I got this phone call from him. He was like, come by the studio. And I'm like, man, I'm, I'm looking at the door and I'm like, I could just go in the house and be done with it. You know, but I'm one of them people that believe everything happens for a reason. Right. He called me. He's never called me to come to the studio before. Not so, ever in your life. Mm -mm. So I pull away from my house. I head over to the studio. I get there. He's playing all these lush samples and all his 70s soul music, which relates straight to the movie because that's the backdrop for this album that I made is set against these soul samples, you know, these things that I've heard growing up. So he's playing all these records and they're amazing. And I'm like, what are you doing? So I'm putting the Hitman back together. You know, he got LV and Sean C, you know, his right. whole group. Right. Um, and I'm like, but what are you doing all this type of music? Because it was the music that I needed. It was the exact music that, you know, I, you know, I envisioned in my mind. And he was like, man, I have nobody to give it to. You know, Biggie's not here. 
And I, just, I can't give these to just anybody. And I was like, he thought somebody who had biggest power needed yeah. it. Yeah. And you were the one that he thought worthy of it. Yeah. And so I was like, well, give me all. I said, what do you do with this music? That, that's, the, that's the best part. I said, what do you do with this music? He said, man, I just play it in my house and I just run around with my socks on. <laughs> <laughs> so you take it. So I take these tracks. It's like 30 of them, by the way. It's 30 of them. Then I just start picking apart the best ones and we just start working from there, you know? He didn't executive produce the album, but he was right there. I gave him associate producer credit, you know, <laughs> and he was very instrumental in, in the album because he made the foundation to which all the other producers produce into. Because, you know, I would play it for the producers and say, it has to fit in this. It has to sound like this. Sonically, it has to have this sound on it. And, yeah. and the great thing about Pub, what I really realize is he's a great producer. I've always known this, but it really it brought me back to Some that time. Some people think that's what he does best. He yeah. thinks that's what he does I best. I think that's what he does He does best. think that's it, what he does it best. It made me realize that he's not a good producer. He's a great producer. And he's produced Ready to Die and Life After Death and Mary J. Blige's album, Jody C's album. And, you know, I start getting these tracks back and I'm like, who's yeah. doing this? Yeah. Like, you know, like who's, and he's a, he's a director. He's like, it's, it's like Motown over there in my studio. I got horn sessions. I mean, the things that he added after the lyrics was on it, you had to hear the bare tracks. The bare tracks were great tracks, but what he added after it made it a movie and made it complete. And what was and the we relevance always, of Big? Because you and I can talk about him and I know a bit about him, but yeah. what was his? Such a charismatic, charming, incredible storyteller, likable guy. Like he, like he's forever loved by hip hop. That's just that's it. It's big because it's just the way he was. His said. honesty, his brutal honesty. You know, black and ugly as ever. However, I stay coochie down to the socks. You know, like he he can do that. Like a Richard Pryor, he was in yeah. in in that way where he can make fun of himself. You know, and it just he was just such a charismatic person. And we've had that in common for a while, but we always was competitive with each other as well. You in know, every way, in fashion very, and music. Fashion, and music. We all we we all in the same business. We're all in the same field. So yeah. we competitive, but friendly competitors even along the way. Like when he uh won a fashion award, you know, I sent him the present. So we would send each other presents <laughs> and things like send that. Him? Uh, I would do stuff like I'll uh, send him cigars and Patron on the uh, red carpet. I make sure when he got on the red carpet, you know, if somebody came and gave him some, yeah. you know, fresh but Cuban cigars. To... No, I'm not trying to show him up. Really, yeah. just no, really. But you're not like... trying to top him in toys either, are you? No, no. We, we more so just can being competitive. Not even so. Uh, I'm better than you. Just better moves, like the execution of something. You know what, y'all? That ain't right. Diddy deserved more than that from Jay Z. He acting like Diddy ain't never do him no favors. He ain't trying to give him no credit for nothing. He might be the reason why Jay-Z got a career for real. We gonna talk about it tonight. And you could say the same thing about Dame Dash and a whole bunch of other people. Jazz O, D Haven, Memphis Bleak. We gonna talk about all that tonight. Make sure y'all check the link in the description box of this video. Head over to Docs Daily. Join the channel, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button because it's going to get real tonight. I got so much love for y'all, man. Make sure y'all do me a favor. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Also hit that notification button. I ain't got nothing but love for y'all, man. But before I go, I got to make sure I give a big shout out to the people that be leaving them comments on my videos, man. Every last one of y'all, y'all appreciate it like Tupac's mama. Like I said... Make sure y'all join this channel, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, head over to Docs Daily tonight, and let me know what y'all think about this in the comment section. I got so much love for y'all. I'ma holla at y'all later though.